the powder coating king is back. Reno King and I have some unfinished business to talk about. In this episode, we cover everything from pigments to productivity. We'll even show you how to use a side hustle to generate more business for your powder coating biz. Plus, we talk about how he's starting to use pigments as a more affordable way to counter the rising costs of purchasing powder. Finally, we mix in some tech talk to seamlessly tie your business workflow from end to end. Get ready to level up your powder coater game. Welcome back to the Powder Coater Podcast. I'm your host. Today we have Reno King. He's back on the show. He was originally on our episode 28. Go check him out over there on the uh, podcast page, which is rosscoat.com. Um, and uh, originally had him on the show and, you know, Reno is not shy to talk about anything. <laughs> um, he, I'm not to be. <laughs> um, and we ended up having a lot of technical difficulties with that one. Um, so hopefully everybody managed to get through it. But, uh, but the main thing is that we ended up getting cut off because of the technical difficulties on the Internet that day. And we didn't get to talk about pigments. And so... We wanted to bring him back on the show today, but we also have so many other things to talk about. So it's going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, um, some other stuff with maybe Columbia Coatings. Um, he downloaded our form and then also, and how to use the form online. And then um, just talk about related business other related businesses that you could get into to, to jumpstart your powder coating business or add extra cash to your company so that you can grow. Um, and that's been our struggle, at least that we, we had that and then we lost it because of COVID-19. And then now we're coming back stronger and better than ever. Um, and how I'm using um, a, uh, this, this side business to kind of just add a little bit more cushion in there on our monthly. But, uh, anyways, welcome to the show, Reno. Glad to have you, you back. Glad to be back. <laughs> For those that, um, so Reno owns Armor Coatings and, uh, let me share my screen. Um, and oh, hold on. Oops. I have to get into that. Uh, page first. So the last time we talked to Reno, he was about ready to start his rebuilding his website, which he did. And here it is. I think it looks fabulous. Um, he ended up going with Wix, right? Is that what you did? Yes. Yeah. So everybody got, get on over to Armor Coatings because I think he's done some pretty significant changes, but also has really, um, made it look nice and he's got all the bells and whistles. So let's go through those. Um, first of all, I really like just this right off the bat. You're collecting people and connection, making connections right away. Um, and once they like you, it's always good to have some kind of call to action. Um, for us, it's the quote, get a quote form on our website. Uh, but this is like, you know, this is how you grow followers. The, the content uh, is really important, um, especially when you want to get people to follow you. I think followers are very important because followers can turn into customers. And that's always great. And I love this little plug in you have here. Yeah. So uh, one of the big things is that I look for in building a website. You know, you can pay somebody a lot of money and stuff like that. I do everything on my own. I like to know how it works, but I've integrated this. So also some of your other podcasts, like I went in and started using to do desk. Um, oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. So in to do desk, you can generate an HTML code uh -huh. for a, uh, 
for a quote request and stuff like that. So when I created it into Duke Desk, I take the HTML and then embedded it in here. So if you go down on the quote area, I'm not yeah, I'm sure where it's at, but uh, yeah. if they fill that out, that goes straight to my to-do desk and gives me a lead in there. Wow, that's a nice little, like, that's super and then nice. I, and I'm, I did up Love for uh, um, a local number so I can send text messages to the customer if they put their deal in. So if, if somebody fills this form out, this is a wow. quotational form that will go straight to my to-do desk with pictures, whatever the customer uploads it to. Yeah. And um, you got this little like disclaimer here that you're not going to spam them and stuff um, that this is. Yeah, I love this. Uh, wow, that's so cool. And it's got all your contact stuff in the bottom. Wow, that's awesome. I didn't, uh, you know, that's something we didn't get into with uh, Detective Codings when we did that show. And I want to say it was like episode I forgot now. Like, I know we did it back in November, I think. Um, yeah, it was a couple of No, it was February. February, mine, yeah. Um, because I did, I, uh, I listened to the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's it was what good. Uh, got me into it. And I've had further discussions um, with Martin from To Do Desk, um, and it seems like this is a really good fit for powder coaters. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have been so it comes with all the REL um, colors already loaded into it. Yeah, nice. And you, as I was started to use it, so I'm still kind of just messing with it. I've had it for about three months. I'm just up re-upped for my next order mm -hmm. um but i'm mainly waiting for the seamless integration of to-do desk and quickbooks yeah. um because oh, wow. then once you create which is coming out in like a week or two uh test people their test the customers are using it this week yeah and i think they'll be integrating it next week yeah that uh, sounds like the a customers. game changer yeah so when you do your work order in to-do desk mm -hmm. it pushes the invoice once you queue it, it pushes the invoice over to QuickBooks and the customer will then pay through that. Well, hallelujah, time. because if that that really is the, the main thing is is to um, is to make that integration into the back end of QuickBooks yep. and hooray if they've done that, they've accomplished that. Now Martin's a really brilliant guy and he really has genuine it seems like he has really genuine concern for his customers. And, you know, he's doing across the industry. I don't know how he's, how he can manage all of that, you know, because yeah. <laughs> each industry has its own and idiosyncrasies, but it seems like the powder coating, um, you know, is, it, it seems to be a good fit, uh, at least yeah. for a handful of us. I haven't tried it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we talked about the forms I know you contacted me last week about um, this getting access to this form. And for those of you that need access to this form, and this is actually, there's two forms. This is one of them. Um, there's another one that we created for online, um, so. for online. So there's actually two different forms. You can choose between both or all, and um, they're in the vault. And how you get access to the vault is you go over here and you click on become a patron. And seriously, like for a um, dollar a month, you can have access to the vault. And it's not just this forum that you're wanting. We're always adding new stuff. For everything that we content wise that we've gotten um, from our custom coders, from other insights from other customer uh, custom coders that we've interviewed um, uh, strategies and stuff like that with backlinks and everything it's all in the vault and so you, just for a dollar you can sign up um, we still have a few more blast guides left if you want to be an avid listener five dollars a month plus you get a t-shirt and um, eventually we're going to launch the coaching sessions uh, hopefully um, soon um, we're still working on that but you'll be on the list for that and then of course super fans uh, will get even more help and I really want to focus on this coder spotlight because I haven't really had a chance to do it but my plan with this 
and Reno, this might be a good one for you because um, we could make a sample video where we're just doing, I have a list of questions to ask you and it's just like, yeah. it, it, it's, it's gonna be put on your website. So the minute after they click that like you on Facebook button, it's gonna open up to a video where you're talking about your company, what makes you different why someone wants to book with you, why someone wants to go to Armor Coatings for their coatings, for their, um, you know, for their metal work, their fabricating, you know, it's a great way to introduce your, and you can blast it anywhere. You can put it on YouTube, you can put it anywhere, yeah. but it mainly it's for your website. Um, just sort of like introing you. It's like maybe a two or, a, you know, two minute video or whatever, where we take the candid answers from you and turn it in with, you know, like maybe we put some music in the background, have some screenshots of what, you know, uh, stuff from inside your shop and everything. So this is totally worth it. I'm happy to produce it. Uh, you know, because I have the podcast, I've pretty got pretty much gotten, you know, I have a couple of different platforms that I use for videos and producing videos and stuff. And I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I've got a guy that we're working with right now who needs to build out his website. And I really want to get him to that because he signed up for this. So anyways, that's oh, enough that's talking awesome. about uh, yeah. the, the patron stuff, but here's a message from today's sponsor. Ross Coat here from Maui Powder Works. You know, we've been providing customers with high-end custom coatings for over 20 years. We love the powder coating business, making auto parts, patio furniture, and stuff beautiful for our customers is the fun part. As you know, the hardest part of any job is getting parts prepped for finishing. At times, this means removing tough industrial OEM coatings, which can take hours, if not days, of chemical stripping and sandblasting. Our business was revolutionized when we discovered the great strippers from Benco Sales. Their customer service folks asked the right questions and recommended a stripper tailored for our needs. Give them a call today at 1-800-632-3626. Get 10% off any B17 products when you mention Roscoat. Um, but yeah, here you are, episode 28, Harnessing the Power of Content. Of course, uh, Powder Coating Kings is a Facebook group, um, and uh, it's a fast-growing Facebook. How many people do you have on that group now? I think... Lost count? I don't, 12, it was over 1300. a thousand. Yeah. I don't... It kind of slowed down the last... I think a lot of things slowed down the last couple of months. Uh, here we go. Digital-wise... Here we go. Yeah, Here's about 1,200 that. members. Yeah, that's good enough. I mean, that's enough to keep things going. I mean, I know people are posting here every day um, for sure. There's Tiffany Gowan. I hope to have her on the show. Yeah, she's I, been doing a lot of cool stuff down there in Florida. She has, yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, so we got to talk about a lot of things. So I want to kind of wrap up and say, that's how you get this form. And when you do get this form, this is what you can do with it. Um, so this is my site. And if you go to locations and then, oh yeah, just locations. I have, this is kind of my, I did it a little weird uh, for mine because in Hawaii, we're so separated. Islands are different, right? You know, it's not like you're in a region. Um, our region is sort of spread out. And so in order for me to rank, I had to kind of cheat on my website a little bit. And this is how I did it. I, I put in um, Oahu, Kauai, and the Big Island. Um, and <clears throat> by doing that, it allowed me to uh, kind of expand my reach a little bit more into the other islands so that I can get, <clears throat> excuse me, I can get more customers to send their stuff to us. And yep. when you click on this site, you can see that one of these forms is on my, is right on the site. So they can download it from my site and you can do that too. So when you get this form, you can take it to your printer guy, right? Or somebody that's good with PDF. 
they can just take off the logo and put your logo and then change the street. And, and if there's anything else you wanna add to these forms, you can do so. Um, and so that's what I've done here. You can see, uh, you can, I just give them a, you can just copy, literally copy me. Just go ahead and copy me, I don't care. Uh, this is how you get started. And cause that's what people need. They need to know what's my next, okay, I'm, I've landed on Reno's. I wanna work with this guy, what's my next deal, right? And, um, you know, uh, it, getting that call to action <clears throat> or getting someone to make an action on your website is so critically important. Um, so they can download the form. And I just, this is just a picture, but then they click on it and it takes them to this form. Now, this is my online form for, so I get a little, uh, my, this form is a little different. This is in-house form. And then this one's a little different, but there's good parts to both of them. So this is because someone's going to be mailing it to us. I want them to write down how many pieces they're sending us, what the yep. color is and all that. So it's a little different than this open open one. And of course, having this disclaimer is so vitally important. Um, as you know, Reno, I was a little rattled when I started the show this morning because literally just hung up with uh what's going to be a troublesome client, I have a feeling at least, you know, because it was this, he said, she said, I, you know, you said on the phone that it was going to be this much and I needed to take it off. And I said, no, I told you to come by with your truck before you took the damn thing off. You <laughs> could have just done that. But see, in his mind, he works, he works past our hours, right? So he can never yeah. come in. So he's already excusing himself. You don't know what the psychology of people is. And I'm rambling now, but, um, you know, we just had that happen the other day in one of the groups. I know someone was saying a third party had dropped off this part and then it just went crazy from there. You know, like nothing went right with this project. And now the guy's complaining and he wants to submit a complaint to the BBB or, or, you know, a bad review or whatever. And it's like, you know what, just try to head these people off at the pass. He wanted his girlfriend to drop it off. I mean, it happens. Don't, yep. don't ever let people dictate to you how you do business. It causes a problem every time. <laughs> totally. You're just asking for it. So that's why we have these forms. And you can talk to someone on Instagram or you can talk to them on the phone, but it means nothing until they come into your door. And I said, look, everybody gets this form when they walk in and yeah. they don't drop it off with their girlfriends. They fill out the form. It's their project. Uh, and listen, we're in we're in restoration, you know, um, but anyways, yeah, there's this, you know, you sign this liability waiver, hold harmless form. I mean, it's, I can't really, you know, it's a boilerplate form. Um, it may not work in your case. I don't know what you do, but hey, it's a start. You can always edit this or change it to your desire because once you take it to your printer shop, they can change all this stuff. This is just stuff that works for us. So it's a great way to get people to kind of get on you know, get what they need, get a quote, get get all this stuff that they need. So um, if you guys need help putting this up and you have a WordPress site, I can kind of show you uh, on the back end how to do it. Just give me a, a instant message or Instagram or <clears throat> direct message on Facebook. Um, okay, that's enough of that ranting. It's working. Yes, yeah, that's true. So let's talk about pigments and some other stuff so a while back and uh that's what got me into pigments is that i was doing cerakote um and i fell into a company called gun candy and they make specific pigments uh for ceramic clear ceramic so when you're doing guns and stuff like that yeah did you disappear no i just stopped sharing my screen oh but uh so I tried it out with ceramics bunch, um, done a lot of cool stuff. And then I was like, when would this, uh, this would uh, look pretty good in the, I wonder what it would look like in powder. So that's when I tried it out in powder and it worked. 
worked. Uh, so I used gun candy there for a while. I reached out to those guys. I was like, hey, why aren't, why aren't you guys marketing this as a powder additive also? And they just completely straight up told me, we don't even want in that market. We're just sticking with Cerakote. I was like, wow. okay, cool. Yeah, they just straight up told me. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll tag you, yeah. the company, all this stuff. They're like, nah. Is that because care. of competition or what? I, I, I have no idea. They would never give me an explanation, but I was like, cool. So I went on the mess with KP Pigments. Uh, that's another company that uh, I had found. And they, uh, they were pretty good. They gave me a 10% code. I don't know if it still works because I haven't ordered any in a while, but it was like powder tin. Uh, I talked with those guys and uh, I used a lot of their pigments and all kinds of different stuff. Of course, it's customer dependent too. Does right. the customer want it? And then do they want to pay for it? Right. Because right. it is a little bit more expensive. You're mixing custom powders yourself, you know? Right. Um, and then, you know, I had a lot of people, what's your mixing ratio? What's your mixing ratio? Well, as long as you're not mixing it too thin or too thick, because everything else in the middle is just kind of, and I usually use about five grams, two and a half to five grams per pound okay. of powder. But it, it kind of like, do you want it more prominent? Do you want it just a little bit of effect? Those are where your uh, mixing ratios come into play. Um, so is it solid and, colors or is it shimmery stuff? Because some of the stuff it, I... Either or. There's you so have a sample many different... Of it? I have, this is some of the gun candies. These are the solid colors, um, but they're super fine too. Yeah. If I open this up, it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I got, of course, I got powder glitter everywhere through my whole office and stuff. But it is super, super oh yeah, concentrated. It is super fine, concentrated, just like mica pigments or something like that. I don't know, but it is. Oh. So you're mixing it in clears. Yeah. So that's just. So if you read, if, when you're looking at, there's a couple companies. There's like KP Pigments, Doctor Pigments. Gun candy. There's all kinds of pigment companies out there because it's really prominent in uh, automotive paint. Like that's where they mix the, uh, you know, the cool Mustang, the Mystic oh, okay. Chrome, or whatever Mustang back in the day. With it was, you know, oh, this is an eight thousand dollar paint job. Well, they were just mixing these same little color flips in uh, automotive paint, and. It just, they're out there. You just got to look and find out what you want. Test a couple. And that's, yeah. that's Here, I mean, I, me... I ain't going to tell you, I know there everything about them. But yeah, uh -huh. if you go, uh, let me see. Get you go free to the, shipping uh, to Hawaii when you spend $50 or more. Yeah, what? sure. What? I know, no way. <laughs> but that uh, 50 bucks, can you still hear me? Yeah. My headphones just died, even though they said they had a bunch of. Uh, I, yeah, you you're coming through fine. I turn my. Uh, oh, I'm definitely gonna subscribe. Keep this up at KP Pigments and then what was Gun? Can gun Candy's another one. Doctor Pigments is another one. How did you find out about? Oh, Gun, gun Candy. For gun Candy is strictly for Cerakote. Like that's okay. Oh my gosh. Clear. Look at that. Yeah. I've done a lot. I've done more of these colors because this is oh. what I started. I found out. Um, I mean, this is a uh, Titan, which is not a, uh, color flip, but these are solid colors and you mix it in, you put a base black down, but you also like, go ahead and click on one. I'll show you something real quick. Um, wow. If you click on it and you read right, go down and see it says uh, black or matched base recommended. Yeah. Well, some of these are not, you got to pay attention because some of them look good on a black base, some look good on a white base, some look yeah. good on a chrome base. And I usually actually use the uh, rose gold. Yeah. On a chrome base. So I mixed it in with the. Uh, clear with a chrome base chrome base mixed in with a clear so it gave a rose gold appearance 
And I believe I used the rose gold off of this one. Wow. That's a beautiful color. And I think there, you know, like, so all these companies that we buy from are using these pigments too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th and that's, nice that's to... another thing, like reducing your inventory. Uh, so you can have like all these colors in powder form, or you can have a bunch of clear and a bunch of black gloss black big box of clear and then a bunch of little containers like this and just mix it whenever it's ready because these will stay these will stay good for a long time right just don't get them wet pretty that's much. like a candy gold there yeah yeah wow these guns are unbelievable i've i've wanted to do something yeah. with my collection <laughs> I used to do it, but this man, it's a lot much. of work just for a little Yeah, bit. oh, this is. I, I'm glad we don't do it. It's I almost too much. got a, you see the grip, the stippling on the grip? Yeah. I almost got a laser a while back to start laser stippling. That, okay, that's how they, yeah. Well, Lots this was are... probably done with a hot, uh, hot iron gun, like a solder gun with a fine tip. You just heat it up and just uh, okay. open it into a pattern. Mm -hmm. But some are now, majority are done. With, What's uh, this? Uh, I think Gun that's coat. the clear that they started using. Oh, okay. Because they didn't have clear before, but, oh, that's KG coatings, yeah. That's another ceramic uh, paint. Okay. Uh, like Cerakote, but this is KG. Is it cheaper? Let's see. Uh, they're about the same. I got some free samples from those guys a while back, but they didn't have as many choices, and uh, I had stuck to Cerakote, but then mm -hmm. when I kind of, I tried out their high temperature, because they do have some high temp coatings for, like, uh, exhaust and stuff like that, but I wound up just sticking with Cerakote, but I've kind of just, here, probably in the last three or four months, slowly quit doing all Cerakote altogether. It's just... Yeah. I have to really? stop. My powder's too busy. I'm the only one that can spray it. I don't spray it enough to teach somebody else. Yeah. So you know where your business is going. Yeah. You know, kind of just let it go. We pretty much just do the dry coating or the cold, cold sear coat from Nick. And yeah, that's how I, even the glacier, the glacier yeah. series, the air dry. I, I just kind of quit doing that too. Yeah. Uh, it's really uh, smelly stuff. Yeah. Um, and but black. you know ross is in the moto moto uh, sport world um so he's got a lot of buddies that he rides with on the weekend and so you know generally speaking it's those kind of guys that want the their pipes done and stuff like that so um it, you know it, it it he doesn't have a lot of time for it but people usually bring it in and it's not for every pipe system like like if the pipes are really rusty and stuff like that, he won't. It, usually, he tries to get people to bring in new stuff or yeah, slightly it's, used. Yeah. And that's another reason, like I quit. Like the treatment, the pre-treatment for a set of used headers takes me about a couple of days to get it ready for coating because I'll degrease it, clean it, mm -hmm. and then I'll put it in the oven and let it cook for a day. Then I'll blast it, and then I'll put it back in the oven, let it cook again for a day, and then try to shoot it the next morning, uh, just to make sure all the grease and grime and soot. But it's yeah. still, I seem to get problems and failures no matter what I do. So, especially on used stuff, I like I don't yeah. mind coating new stuff, but this used stuff, man, people think it's going to be a hundred percent, but you don't really know until they cycle that engine. I'll try to put it in the oven and cook it at 500 degrees for half a day or something. But even then, yeah. you know, it's not, I can't get it up to eight, nine, a thousand degrees to see right. if the coating will fail. And that's where yeah. the, if it's going to fail, it's going to fail at like a thousand, 1200 degrees. Right. And then you got somebody mad because it's on their car. Even if you refund the money or redo it, they still got to pull it out and reinstall it. They don't want to do that. Yeah. Headers. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, it works, but it may not be for everybody. And um, 
Plus, like I know the school that Nick has is, it's got a really long wait list and it's very expensive. Um, so it's something to consider, but I like us talking. And first of all, before we hang up the whole pigments uh, thing um, and move on to like, uh, you know, other other types of related businesses, I want to let you know in, I just got June, uh, it's the June issue. I get stuff late here in Hawaii, it takes longer for it to ship, but um, Coatings World Magazine has industrial coatings on their front and right here on the, it says special effects pigments. So if you think this pigment thing is going away or it's, it's just getting started, it's just getting it started. Is. Um, and uh, now these are big companies that do painting and stuff like that, but that's the article and they're exploring new products and new ways and new colors and, and just getting started. So this is exciting news for our world. Here's a message from today's sponsor. Do you know chemical strippers from Banco Sales reduced our prep time by up to 80%? We chose Banco B17 and have been using it now for five years. We were surprised at how effortless it removed finishes from literally anything we put into it. Removal takes minutes, not hours. Several suppliers over the years have told us they have something as good as B17, but don't believe it. There's a reason the name B17 is universally applied for those claiming to have fast strippers. Buy it by name and available only by Benko Sales. B17 is the industry benchmark by which every other stripper is compared. Accept no substitute. Get started today by going to BenkoSales.com. B-E-N-C-O sales.com. Say Roscoat sent you for 10% off B17. And that's a, a lot of these companies like they ain't gonna they ain't gonna make it unless there's a drive for it. You know, they're not gonna make yeah twenty thousand pounds of some crazy color flip flop, and hopefully it sells. It's got to be a need for for them to invest the money into it. Yeah, uh, Columbia Coating just released their line of uh, chameleons and flip flops, which I have. I got the swatches. Hold on. Oh, you got swatches, you lucky dog. Um, let me go over there right now because they had a, I did notice that they, it's not on their homepage. What the hell? <laughs> I would be shouting from the rooftops. So I, I always, well, Brian's not that far away from me, so I always hit him up. I and mean, when he gets some new stuff in, I try to go down there and, you know, grab some of it or look new at powders. it. New powders, here we go. Take a look. Uh, and which, ah. Uh, as you said, these are them. Yeah, Caribbean. these are them. I'm going to try to. Um, am I sharing my screen? I think I forgot no. to share my screen. Okay, let me um, share my screen. So they. These are change colors and flip flops. These are very, very similar to uh, the stuff that I was using uh, to make custom colors. Let me see. That's Sean, I, I didn't see I, them. Huh? Can you push them up there again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's why I was saying earlier, I can't see nothing. All your stuff is blacked out. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, yeah, let's uh, share. Oh, nope. It's not behaving. Here we go. Oh, yeah, those are pretty. Oh, I'm going to get me some of those. And I did. I got some Eastern Dragon. I'll be testing oh, that out and making a, a YouTube video. And I think it was the other one. Because I have some similar to the purples and blues. Um, there was another one. It's kind of the same color that I'm gonna try out. So what's week. the um, application then? Where I always hate. I so think. it's it's a clear coat essentially. So you put a uh, black base down, mm -hmm. and uh, then you put over it. It's like uh, you know any of the shimmering candy colors. Uh, black base or dark colored base, mm -hmm. and uh, then you put. That. Oh, that's why I got sunken treasure and eastern dragon. But I'll yeah, be wow, these are pricey too. Ooh. 
Yeah, the pigments, the color flip pigments are uh, pretty expensive. If you look back at KP pigments, I think five grams, which is around $35 then plus shipping. Mm -hmm. So usually like when I buy, you know, five grams, I'm mixing it with one pound of powder. Uh, so you're looking at, you know, $40 pound of powder <laughs> by the time right. I'm done mixing it. Which right. these, like, they can mix larger quantities. They can buy larger quantities of pigments so they can get the prices cheaper. I did also find the uh, pigment for, uh, that's what I was looking for on my phone a while ago, was, uh, you know, uh, the Prismatic Universe on uh, Prismatic Powders. Yeah. I found the pigment. Oh, you did? For that, it's on Alpha Pigments. Ooh, and it's called Silver Holographic Pearl. Pigments. There we go. So how did you get turned on to pigments? I Just tell me the backstory. Here. Through, through Cerakote. Through Cerakote, okay. I, I don't know if I was just on some deal, watching some videos, and somebody got me... It was gun candy that started me, and then I started looking at all these other ones. If you search the top, go uh, silver uh, holographic pearl in the search bar. Oh. Here we go. Oh, right yeah, there. there you go. Look at that. That's the prismatic universe. Mm-hmm. Through uh, prismatic powers. And it'll give oh, you, like, goodness. if you scroll down... Uh huh. Um, keep on going. You'll see the uh, information, like how your mixing ratios. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. That this is a nice add to their website. So there's standard paints and coatings, mixing ratios. I mean, just that's nice. Candles, epoxy resins, everything. Uh, wow, architectural paper coatings. Yeah, you that's coat paper. Yeah. 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 Like for if you wanted to do an iridescent, if you're a supplier of wallpaper. Wallpaper or yeah. you look at, uh, looking at, uh, oh, shoot, like Christmas cards or, you know. Yeah. These little oh cards gosh. and stuff like that. There's all kinds of. Uh, and it just keeps going on and on. Plastic Vinyl wraps, thing. plastic films, bottles. Wow. Everything. They put it all on slime. Oh my God, how many kids would want that? I gotta tell my niece, her, that's all her daughter does is slime. Um, candles, oh yeah, you're right. Ha ha. As you know, those people take pay you top dollar. Soaps, lotions, makeup, mm -hmm. all that. It, look at that, that just goes crazy. Wow. So that's a the, People's been using pigments in almost everything. These pigments have been uh, being used by all these other industries, mm -hmm. but nobody's really like, I've called them and they're telling me like, oh, we've never heard anybody mixing with powder coating. I was like, where well, are you going to today? <laughs> so that's why I'm like, go try it out. I mean, right? will it work? Will it not work? Is it worth your time? I don't know. That's why I tried it in the beginning. It worked, yeah. it seemed to be fine. So yeah. I just kept doing it. I think it's good that people push that some, you know, people like you are pushing that envelope because there seems to be a lot of mystery in our industry that where yeah. it's just that either we haven't taken the time to explore that side of it or um, I mean, I certainly I mean, I've learned so much just from starting this podcast. It's insane, like how I've dug past a lot of the surface stuff and getting below the surface to our industry. Um, I mean, just look at, look at YouTube videos. Probably like doing multicolor and vinyl layering of powder coating. There's probably not any videos older than five years ago. Mm -hmm. But now there's tons of them everywhere. Yeah. I uh, noticed that gap a long time ago, which is why I started doing my videos. And yep. really, it was just, to be honest with you, I was just trying to get my blog, um, my consumer blog or the Maui Powderworks Ross Coat blog to just get 
in the top pages. And so I was told, you know, you know, do an infographic, do a, you know, <laughs> do all this stuff. And, um, you know, so I did, I made videos. I, you know, it just basically, it was like a video blog, basically just covering all the main points of whatever I was talking about. And, and it, it, you know, that was just really more or less what I was getting at, but um, it, it's, yeah, there wasn't a lot, it wasn't a lot, but now it's awesome because now, now the gap is getting filled. Yeah. yeah. We're, if I would have been more prepared and seen it a little bit better, I would have made more YouTube videos back in the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you've done really well. And you know, the point is, is to consistently create content. Yeah. Um, you don't always have to outdo yourself. I know that gets really competitive. You know, I'm a competitive person. So I'm like, I'm always trying to make the podcast better, do more, do this, do that. But, you know, just really just trying to create, um, you know, consistent content yeah. is really more, more or less what it should be about. Um, and speaking of which, I do want to bring up um, Aaron because he owns powder works 717 and his uh instagram he's really making an effort so let's go over there to his website and uh, the, no. how this relates is because um how it relates is um that you have in order to do it oh hold on let me stop sharing my screen so i can i don't know my zoom isn't working 100%. Yeah, that's right uh, your stuff is uh, being a little weird. It is being a little weird. My size is it's doing not being great reactive this time. <laughs> huh? I said my size is doing great this uh, this time. Yeah. No problems. <laughs> and where did I put his? There's yours. Um, oh, here we go. Can you see his website? Uh, no, ma'am. Oh, shut Everything up. is. Like I see my uh, playback video, but your there boss it is. Video share your screen. screen. Okay. Yeah, it's just been a little laggy. I think my computer is. Um... Oh yeah, he's got a, lots of awesome stuff on his page. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm he's on Instagram. A, yeah, he's got. He's an up and comer um, and he's a nice kid. He's pretty young and I think he's pretty young. He sounded pretty young to me on the phone. He actually called Ross and talked to Ross about getting on the podcast. And I, I, I think he's just so busy now. He, you know, cause I thought, wow, he really presented something really exciting. And let me tell you what this kid's doing. Um, go, first of all, go follow his, Insta his Instagram. Um, he is really go support him because he's really making an effort to make a nice Instagram. And if you're trying to get inspiration or get motivated to um, continually post or up your game in Instagram, I think he's definitely somebody that's you can see the effort that he's making. Um, and he he'd be great to kind of follow along and stuff like that. You know, um, when, when Instagram, when I first started Instagram, probably I want to say 2017, maybe late 16, I think I started, didn't know what I was doing. Um, of course it's, it is a learning curve and, um, I was starting to follow other custom coders, of course, Roo and black label were some of the first that I followed, but you know, just, you don't want to, you don't have to copy exactly how they do it. They just do theirs really well. Um, but this guy is doing his own thing and he's definitely, you know, reaching out to his customers. So that's number one. He's not trying to prove to other powder coders uh, what he's doing. He's trying yeah. to go after a consumer. And yeah, you do want to appeal to powder coders because we have a very supportive community of, you know, so when you are getting out there, you should ask your coder friends to follow your Instagram for sure. Uh, just so that you can get the likes and the engagement that you need to grow your Instagram. But in the end, you always want to, you know, speak to your core audience, which is the people that are gonna be bringing you jobs. Um, 
Uh, so head on over to his Instagram. It's really nice. But the reason why he called us is because he did something really interesting. And that is he is starting, he started, you know, obviously he'd started powder coating, but in order to kind of boost or help start up his company faster, he would buy um, these, what are these called? These are the pipe oh, tail the, the pipes. exhaust tips? Yeah, they're the little tips and they don't cost very much. And he's so clever because this is what he told me he did. He, he bought a bunch of these and any extra powder that he ordered that was left over from a job, he would powder coat them and then put them on his website or I think, I don't know, somewhere on eBay or, you know, he just went to like Etsy or whatever, wherever you sell stuff that, you know, like, um, and I thought, wow, that is really innovative. So it kind of, you're using this, in it, you know, relatively inexpensive, inex, inexpensive product, utilizing, getting your powder coating skills up, right? Because you're constantly doing these things, making a bunch of them ahead of time. You know, you don't have to make 10 or 20 of them in this color. You just need a couple of them. You just need yeah, one or two it. buyers, right? If it, it sits on the shelf too long, strip it and paint it black. Yeah, there you go. And <laughs> exactly, right? And and just put it out there to generate buzz for your business. Um, and look at this. Now, current production time is 21 days for all exhaust. So he's done it so well. He's now three weeks behind. <laughs> he might be running into a problem of getting them. It could be. It could be. Um, but... It's a simple way of taking a product, an aftermarket product that you're that you're interested in, that you like, and using it to boost your business. You know, um, so let's see. Let me close this. But he has a really nice site too, um, and uh, he. I think he. I might have seen some of his stuff on Pinterest, but I'm not sure if he has a Pinterest account. That looks like him there. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a really clever way to jumpstart your business. Um, and I think he's kind of like, literally he works out of the store, the storage unit place. Like, <laughs> I don't know how he's doing it, but I think that's maybe he's getting a, another place now. But that's why that is the background. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Right. It don't matter um, how you start. You just got to start. Yeah. So let's see. He's got a shop now button. Let's go check that out. So there you go. Look at that. That's a great way to make extra money. Yeah. Somebody's always going to want a purple exhaust tip or even this color, this candy teal. I mean, he's just using extra powder left over from jobs to make these. And then he puts them up on, uh, awesome on his, idea. yeah, I think it's clever. I think it's really, really clever. Anyway, so that's just one guy doing this. Um, now I want to flip over to um, your page because I saved this because um, it, it does talk about ideas to, oh no, this was the business wrap. But yeah, I mean, you could do a wrap business, you know, vinyl wrap um, and stuff. I tried, um, I did get into rapping there for a while. This is probably three years ago, mm -hmm. but one of my buddies that was, I was in the army with actually was better and he started his own business. So I kind of just backed away because yeah. it was, he was doing it full time and mine was just kind of, the, there's no reason for me to compete with him. I just send people to him. And if he gets, I've done probably a couple sets of wheels for, uh, wheel jobs through him because somebody come in and want their vehicle wrapped and then mm -hmm. they want their wheels to get powder coated also. So yeah, it was a good business move. I think like I didn't, it's kind of hard to wrap in a powder coating shop. You need a complete True. separate room because wrap has to have a super clean room. Like you could get a hair off your arm under the wrap and see. It. Oh no. Yeah. So, so you have powder and dust going nowhere. Yeah, uh, it's like painting and powder coating. It got to a point where it was just too much. Um, but
but you know, even me, like, okay, so here's my, uh, let me, and then I'll share my little side business tip. And then we're going to go into what you're doing too. Um, and sometimes you have to experiment, um, with well, I got the perfect thing to show too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see, got you thinking. Um, Hey guys, you know, we never thought the Potter Coder podcast would take off as well as it has. The level of engagement and bringing custom coders together has been wonderful and worth every late night edit and weekend recording. Whether it's product features, smart business strategies, or custom coder interviews, we are encouraged to continue to bring great content. That's why we're going to show you how you can help us just a little bit more by sponsoring the show for as little as a dollar, five, or ten dollars per month. Just go to Roscoat.com page and look for the Become a Patreon button in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Once you're there, you can scroll to learn more about our goals and mission, grow our community by bringing you new episodes and news each week. With every sponsor level, you get something for yourself, too, to guarantee your success as a powder coat. We are so thankful for you and enjoying the content we bring you each week and hope you show your support by becoming a sponsor. And level up your powder coder game. So this is my tarot car, my dirty car. I have to change this. This is before I cleaned it. Um, but I, you know, we have a rental car crisis going on here in Maui. There are too many tourists coming and not enough renter cars. And this is my tarot car. Let me see if I got a bit. Here's my minivan that I used to use um, with uh, when I had my refinishing business and when I was doing more remodels. So I bought this five years ago, six years ago now. Uh, so it's all paid for and I'm just renting it. And I rent it for $110 a day and it is fully booked. Uh, so in case you're coming to Maui, you can rent my van for me, <laughs> but it is fully booked. And until like August, it, it's crazy. Like, and we're just, see, look, I'm even advertising Maui Power Works with my, <laughs> that's funny. I didn't even realize that. Um, but I mean, it's giving us like maybe $1,500, $2,000 a month in, in extra income you know, really pays good. for the groceries, whatever, you know, uh, but these are some of the things that you can do to kind of, um, and it's not a perfect van. I mean, it's got its boo-boos and stuff um, and everything, but oh my gosh, people, you know, you're helping your community, you're helping an industry and you're making, um, the main thing is, is that you're, you're doing outreach in the community, right? Through your business right? By having a related business or, or wrapping up next to other people that have related businesses and stuff. And um, so you kind of share in that uh, swirl of money or cash or whatever customers that, you know, could help you grow your business and stuff. So, but let's talk about your, what you're doing. And is that the Tennessee, let's go back to your website because you're doing Mid Tennessee designs, right? Yes. Mid Tennessee. Oh, no, nothing on this page, though. <laughs> no, there's nothing on it. <laughs> wah, wah. I'm working on it. I should have I, I should have went in there and hit it, but uh that one picture of us standing in front of that sign, that's one of the signs we did. Um because it's okay. yeah, so let we, me let me go back and keep talking. Uh Last year, August, which let me back this up. Like, when I first started powder coating, it I picked powder coating because it was the end of all industries. You know, it's the Oops. finished work, whether it's automotive, industrial, customization, from you know, hardware to lights to or uh, you know, like decorative lighting in your house. A lot, all that stuff's powder coated. So I picked powder coating because it was 
the end industry. Right. And I was going to expand once I stabilized powder coating, expand, stabilize the business. It was profitable, stuff like that. Go into either performance or fabrication. Well, I don't know if I'll ever do automotive performance. That's kind of like, it was just an idea. If it goes that way, cool. But we got into fabrication, which now we got a, a CNC plasma table. We can, we design a lot of the stuff. I mean, yeah, you can buy files of cool pictures and stuff like that, but it don't always work out and then you're layering them. So mm-hmm. we have uh, some really good CAD software, Fusion 360 and uh, uh, SketchUp and I don't know if we'll ever play with SolidWorks or not, but uh, fabbing goes a really hand in hand because you, a customer could come in and say like, hey, I would like this wild roots ridge sign, you know, mm-hmm. that's a uh, two layer sign welded together and then the back is bolted on because it's a different color, but it's right. all powder coated. Um, there was actually an addition to that after we took that picture that hung down and it said the, uh, the address and the road number below it. And there was two wooden posts that hold mm-hmm. it up. Um, and then we make trophies for race events. This I is saw one. that. That was actually beautiful. That we is beautiful. We finished it up. We put our uh, logos on the back, mid-10, armor coating. This is the the race uh, coordinators, I guess that you'd call it. TriStar mm-hmm. ends up racing. Uh, the class uh, for it. And these are only going to go to the first person, first place people. And then that's the uh, racetrack that is going in Clarksville Speedway. I know my stuff's good, but this will all be taken apart probably tomorrow and mm-hmm. blasted and powder coated. This wow. is our protocol. This will stay in the shop. It's uh, beautiful. Where, like whoever designed that is just that, that's my buddy john he does all of that that's the tall guy on the uh i don't know if you can see this my guy mouse right here yeah that's yeah. the guy right there man he came from uh he worked as an industrial uh light industrial fabrication company uh smi c smith they do stuff at factories you know he was designing aspiration systems and catwalks and stairs and stuff like that Mm-hmm. And then uh, me and him kind of teamed up and started Mid Ten Designs. Uh, we did it completely separate from the powder coating. Yeah, uh, that's just fine. Cause, just because <laughs> me and my wife are business partners on powder coating, and me and yeah. him, because uh, I had uh, all the tools, welding machines, plasma table, computers, stuff like that. He had all the skill, um, and it's been yeah. a pretty good year uh, starting out, but uh metal prices like yeah uh, just for instance i think we're buying a sheet of like say 14 gauge uh uh four by eight for like 70 something dollars back in november Mm -hmm. now it's almost 200 dollars um yeah we we bought some quarter inch sheets for 90 dollars a piece gave us a discount on them back in november we bought them for 90 bucks a piece but now a piece of quarter inch is over 400 dollars and like nobody wants to check everybody's like why is your prices so high i'm like most of that's material we're cutting back on the dang uh labor and stuff because we're trying to sell this stuff you know we're trying to still stay relevant um Worst time to start a metal business during this uh, economy wasn't what we were expecting for 2021, but yeah, we're still doing it. It's getting better. Hopefully, well, I don't know if it's getting better. Week before last, our metal supplier said they went up $150 per ton on plate steel, so it's like three sixteenths and higher. Um, but hopefully, it does come back down because now one little mistake costs you a lot of money, whereas. Right. You're like, oh, yeah, that one messed up. Just throw it away. Yeah. So, yeah, like, oh. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you're you're taking a risk there, but you, it's, you do have someone, a partner that is, you know, pretty, seems like he's pretty experienced. Super and, sad. Yeah. It, especially in the cab, that, that makes a big difference because then somebody can come in and say, hey, can you build me this? 
and mm-hmm. we'll sit there and play with it for like a few hours and like here it is now we can just flatten it out do it in a three-dimensional design flatten it out cut it on a plasma table do a bend or you know a break or whatever mm-hmm. and uh or roll it whatever the case may be but yeah and then turn around and like once he's done building it i can get down there sandblast it and powder coat it in like a couple hours um yeah got to be faster with his stuff because i'm trying to promote that business you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i want his stuff to look good and get it turned out fast fast turnaround because here yeah. i think there might be a couple places in nashville but not too many people have a full powder coating and fab shop in the same building mm-hmm. some of your bigger companies do but then they're yeah. lots of certain things this you know, is like, you just make roll cages we're kind of yeah. like a job shop uh, you come in, you got an idea, and we'll tell you straight us. We've had people come in and say, hey, can you build this, this bumper? It's online for $900. We look at them like, for us to reverse engineer it and build it, yeah. it'd probably be, you know, $2,000. Mm-hmm. Like, Why are you so high? I was like, because this company's already got the design. Right. They have this design cost spread over a 1,000 of them where we're just going to spread it over one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great way to say it too you know some things, some things are not feasible to build like if there's a company out there that's mass producing it, buy it from them i mean if you wanted a different right. color we'll strip it and do it we're not gonna lie to you right or try to coax you into buying a two thousand dollar part when you can buy it for nine hundred doesn't make I sense i always thought like you know what we always were thinking or an idea we were thinking here is like you know just do a straight rail fence uh you know gate and just offer it you know just standard stock gate because usually the ones that are um it they only comes in black or something like that right you you don't or red you know or like a rust color or something Uh, but if you could do that same type of fencing um, and have maybe two or three different styles and then just like any color, you know, they want purple, they can have purple if they want, you know, brown had, or whatever. I had a company contact me about a month ago. Um, it's kind of, it's aluminum fencing mm-hmm. and it has like the prettier top rail. That's like a three tier or yeah. whatever, you know, it rolls over. Uh, so they buy it from this company in Missouri and, you know, they can, they'll, they'll go out to the job site, take all the measurements and then contact this company and they build it pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they're prop, they're having problems with the company being able to get the material to build them now. So they were reaching out to me because they are going to start to build them. And the company has powder coats them in house Mm -hmm. because it's a kind of completely done when you get it, you just assemble it and install it. No welding on side or anything right. like that. I have to cut a little bit, but they did the powder coating. Well, they're short on material. So this company was contacting me to see if they build it, I powder coat it for them, um, which is pretty cool there. But mm-hmm. also I kind of already know like metal is already scarce. If that big company can't find it, I don't think they can either. <laughs> yeah. This is, it's kind of part of what we were talking about in episode 36 with Scott Francis and I, everybody must, must go watch that one. Um, It talks about really big trends that good, bad, or indifferent, whether it's China or supply chain or innovations in um, the industry, like pigments, you know, just getting more pigments availability and how these companies, they're headed for a boom. They know this is coming around. So now it's funny because it's like here in all of this difficulty that the market is, you know, is experiencing like, you know, metal, you know, getting metal or uh, getting your powder on time or whatever. It's like, um, this is the time to start formulating your next move. Yes. You know, it is. It's there's not, out don't wait that, for the boom to happen. The boom is yeah. coming. There, there's still plenty of people out there that are wanting to buy. There's plenty of people out there wanting to build, but it's material and costs 
cost is high, material shortage. Mm -hmm. The demand is really high. Uh, that's why I think the prices are getting drove up. I was told, now I don't know this, there's no shortage of raw material. Mm -hmm. Just getting these plants back up and running 100 right. like they used to, I guess, is the problem. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the rental car crisis here. You know, it's like they, Hertz and Enterprise and all those companies, they needed cash. So they went and they took all these cars from Hawaii and they shipped them back to the mainland so that they could uh, sell them for cash flow at auction yeah. to pay their bills. And now they can't get those same cars back. Uh, they can't get new cars because there's a microchip thing or, yeah, uh, or, or yeah, it's exactly. The, 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 uh, the semiconductor chips, it's also affecting PlayStation. That's why I think no PlayStation and Xbox is out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> I've been trying to find a PlayStation 5. I'm, I'm not paying a thousand dollars for one. I'm pay retail only. Uh, so I'm going to wait until there's one on the shelf up on. Right. Uh, but you're going to lose them skills. <laughs> uh, I was just buying it for the kid. I haven't played video games in six or seven years. but uh, Yeah. But, it, you know, there are some changes happening, but if you could muddle through them and and um, maybe learn on a dime or whatever, you know, uh, you know, I think there's going to be a tremendous um of course, now, if you talk to my partner over here, it's like the world's falling, the crashing down, you know, like the 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 stock market, this, the, the, the you know, like him and I are perfectly paired because, you know, uh, he, he's doom and gloom and I'm like, yeah, cheery and optimistic, whatever, but somehow we make it work. Um so yeah, I think there's a lot of upside. Now's the time for you to start thinking about this stuff. Start, you know, we've shared some ideas today. Maybe you've got something in your back pocket that you haven't had a chance to really pull out and examine. Maybe this is the time to do it. You know, I just want to inspire everyone because if 2020 gave us anything to, you know, it's just like that time to think about something innovative or something new or to take action on something. Um, I know some of you guys were busier than than ever during that time. We were a little, we were slow, but uh, it gave us the pause we needed to make a move on lots of different ideas and stuff that we had. Um, but it also creates buzz, like what Powderworks 717 is doing, you know, like. Yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. It's I mean, great. I kind of did it with cups, the Yeti cups back mm -hmm. in the day. That's what I started with. I was selling yeah. cups, whether it had a logo on it or not, because you couldn't get a purple cup back then. Right, but, right. Uh, Laser now etching. Now all over. Laser yeah, etching cool. is, and engraving is hot. I did a bunch of those, and I should have never sold my laser, but I did. Yeah. You can't do it all either at the same time, you know, they, you got to specialize in something, right? Um, so it's good to explore if you have the ability or a friend who has a machine that you can partner with or whatever you can, you know, it took you a few times, like you said, you tried different things until you realized that wasn't really didn't work for you because of this or that, you know, sometimes, sometimes when you take risks, you do have to kind of realize that that happens, you know? Um, yeah, awesome. What else? Oh yeah, you were gonna talk about guns, the uh, Columbia yeah, coding. so, well, I was gonna say, I'm gonna do a, a, a YouTube video this week or next week on those colors, uh, the chameleon and flip flop that uh, I got from uh, Columbia Coatings. But also, I'll be going down to Columbia Coatings to test out their new uh, gun system. And I believe it is a French, it's a French gun. Pretty high in the European and Australian market. It is very comparable to a Gima gun. 
And it's priced around the same price as a Gima gun. So let me see if I can power it up. Uh, pull it up here real quick. It has a funny name, Sames Kremlin. But it's green. Uh, it is their higher end, uh, one of the high end units. It says it's 25 second or less color change. Oh, did I lose you? Dilusia, you still there? I'm here. Oh, it you're just, muted. I know. Start with the head. coding Columbia codings thing again because it just died. Sorry, <laughs> no, sorry. I, I was sitting there talking and I was like, "Why is she trying to join it, now?" <laughs> no, it just, uh, it just like crashed. I think my computer's getting tapped out. Yeah, I'll just start over. So next week, or this week or next week, I'm gonna try to do a uh, um, a spray example on the Eastern Dragon and the Sunken Treasure uh, Chameleon flip flop colors from Columbia Coating, and then also uh, Brian's on vacation right now, so I talked to him. Uh, but I'm going to try to go down next week, mid to end next week, and do a demo of this gun. And hopefully, if he lets me, I still got to ask him, do a video on it. Uh, because he's not, there, it's just not about releasing the gun. He says it's the whole thing, like training. Uh, all he, he He's going to have uh, videos on it also, like how-to videos. Yeah. And parts, spare parts. So... There's a couple of other things I think that'll be listed on their page this week. Uh, they have the hopper feed uh, and the uh, the box feed, which mm -hmm. the box feed can also do a uh, small hopper or the big hopper unit can also do Yeah, small. we use their hopper. It's awesome. Yeah. So uh, those will, that is, that is going to be cool. Hopefully I can buy one this year because when I was about to buy Earlier this year, I was about to buy a 171, which there's nothing wrong with my gun, but I was just going to buy one because I was, I'm trying, I'm a 100% Columbia coding guy. You know? <laughs> uh, they support me, so I support the heck out of them. Sure. Um, I was going to buy a 171 gun. He's like, hold on, I got a new gun coming out. Mm -hmm. Just wait a minute. And I was like, well, let me know because I'm going to do, I would like to do a video on both of them then. The old 171 and then the newer uh, um, the newer guns that they come out because from what I've read so far, they're they're pretty on the same lines as a uh, gun. Yeah. Okay. Color change in 25 seconds or less. What? That's what it says. I don't know. But uh, I haven't. I'd I like to see that. That's what I'm going to try to go down there and do. I'm going to take some difficult, hard to spray parts, some flat panels, uh, and I'm going to do some color change. I'm going to spray some stuff. Probably not going to bake it, but just go through the operations. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do it not 100%. I haven't planned on it. I just kind of talked to him briefly the day before yesterday about it. But the plan is to go down there, do a whole video montage, whether it's uh, during the week or on a Saturday go through the whole operations, the setting up, uh, the control panel. I have been reading because all their uh, manuals and uh, stuff like that are on either the same Kremlin website or mm -hmm. they've uploaded a lot of the documents onto uh, Columbia Coding's page already. Uh, he says there's going to be some more stuff later this week that are going to be launched on the site. He didn't get into what, but uh, we'll go... Of course, when everybody reads this, everything should be out there. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I hope to get it out quick, quickly. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm telling my videos are going to do next week, but by the time this gets out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll be doing some some of those color deals. I'm going to give you getting some more of these uh, custom colors from them. Uh, yeah, I'm going to order mine today. Just to I get need some, some new ones, uh, yeah. Cool, uh cool stuff out there show you guys some of the new uh color flip-flops and stuff like that because you know what i wish i wish all these companies would do like well like when you order samples um 
it's so nice. I think it would be ideal if you could buy a swatch sampling of like all the reds. Why do you have to go through the whole series? And then, you know what I mean? Like on my wall, I have, you know, all the colors, but it yeah. comes in the rainbow of colors. And I just want, give me all your reds. Give me all your yeah. grays. Give me all your, you know, bronzes. It, it just makes it so much easier if they that, sold them that way. Some of that, I think, goes like they change up a lot. Uh, like I have powder in my shop that is discontinued. You can't even find it. Right. Like, I'll go and look the, whether it's prismatic or Columbia color or whatever. I'll be like, oh, let me look up this uh, color to see what it is, you know, what it looks like. I don't know how long ago this I bought it, but and then it says, no search found. I'm like, well, I guess they discontinued it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. I mean, I have boxes of swatches because sometimes they just get wore out. People rub it yeah. together. Right. You know, kids. I got kids up here all the time. They're running around with them. Throwing them over yeah. There. I'm trying to get Ross to do like these panels. Yeah. Um, and stuff i anytime you know it's hard to train yourself but if you can you know there, get, i don't mind the flat panels i like the s panels a little better do you because uh, it shows the iridescent stuff you know the metallic yeah, that better. Is, like if you're shooting a, a solid color cool uh if you're shooting a metallic or candy um looking at a flat panel and trying to see it on round, round edges yeah I, forget, um, I used to buy them all the time and i'd have them hanging up in my booth uh, or right there as you go in, like, hey, shoot a test sample of that color, right. too. Yeah. I need to put my test samples, you know? Of course, they yeah. are big, too. But, right. Uh, well, the reason for the test panels um, originally, or why they started, is because of OEMs, right? And they have to get that color just right. And if it's the lot is off or um, something's not right with the powder, it's got grit in it or something, then um, the test panel will give you that without having to shoot a whole line to realize your mistake, right? So that's, you know, but for us, it's more about sales, se selling, yeah. selling the, so it's a, it's a used a little differently with custom coders. But. And sometimes I'll, uh, I'll powder coat something and they'll be like, uh, can I get a sample because I'm going to go and have paint made for it. So the paint match it. Yeah. When you go to yeah. O'Reilly's or whatever, they just put yeah. that little heater on top. Mm -hmm. And they get pretty close uh, paint match. Yeah. I think we, um, they're hard to get. They're very expensive. Um, I know I, I ended up ordering them <laughs> directly from Tiger because I think the minimum <laughs> order from the company they recommended was like 250 panels. Well, I didn't need 250 panels. That was the minimum order, right? Yes, yeah, I think I bought a lot of those for pretty cheap. Where'd I did you go? Tell, I can't remember. It's been years ago, and I need yeah. to look it up because I have very. I good. just, I just because I had a Tiger account, I just ordered through them. But that, you know, we, I think we bought a hundred of them or something like yeah. that. But because I, I didn't need two fifty. Don't do the speed shapes, the ones that look like cars. Oh. <laughs> well, I messed up, and like I ordered some. They're like a weird primer on them. They're, oh. great for, they're great for uh wet paint but bubble in the oven like i just gave oh. of them. i bought like two big boxes of them because i thought speed shapes would be better well in order for me to use them i gotta strip them and blast them. oh you're kidding like, no nah, it's dumb that is because it just bubbles the i tried powder coating over it and it just that whatever's primer or whatever it mm -hmm. just bubbles uh when you put it in the oven Powder Coating Nation, Kim Scott here. It's time to grow your business with us. The Powder Coating Near Me directory can get your powder coating shop the real exposure it needs to succeed when you list your job shop today. Join a list of top custom coders who've listed their credentials to be discovered by the customers who are searching for powder coating every day. Head over to powdercoatingnearme.com, click add a coating shop, and start creating your very own page for free. Yes, free. You can add your logo, name, address, phone number, map listing, social media links, photos, video, and more. 
When you submit your listing, we'll get notified and approve you right away. Now you can add all the categories you specialize in, even add your own tags. Get the SEO and valuable backlinks your company needs for authority and getting ranked. You can even use the link you create and share it to your favorite social media profiles to build legitimacy as a custom coder. What are you waiting for? Become part of the largest consumer search directory in powder coding in the world. All for free. Find and click the link in this podcast or go to powdercodingnearme.com to get started growing your brand today. We've been, uh, so I have a, one of my guys that work here. Uh, he's friends, uh, Brendan Joyner. He's friends with a shop owner called C4 Entertainment. They specialize in like old school video games, uh, uh, comic books, you mm-hmm. know, like Ghostbuster nostalgia items yeah. and stuff like that. You know, just all kinds of, well, a while back we were like, why don't we just build him a sign? He wanted to build him a sign, so we built him a sign, and then I went down there and talked to him, and took some signs down there, some Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, cool! Yeah, I see what you're saying. Just with the yeah, yeah, just work out a deal. But hey, you can make fifteen percent profit or twenty percent. This is the MSRP. You sell it on a consignment kind of thing, mm-hmm. like put it on your wall, put it for sale. We just want this much money out of it. Yeah. You can sell it for whatever. And you make your money out of it, whether it be 20, 30% on top of, like, say, if I sold it for $50, but you sell it for 75 You know, all yeah. they got to do is hang it up on their wall. They just need wall space. Because those people are coming to come in there and see, like, oh, that's a Ghostbuster sign? That would look great over all my Ghostbuster, uh, you yeah. know, uh, layout and figurines and video game stuff. You know? deck your room out and so far i mean we just started a couple weeks ago but we're gonna look at other things i think that's a brilliant idea and you know those are the kind of things that you just want to look around your backyard or around your town or you know just start looking at these businesses you know laser etching and stuff like what could we do with those people do we have a little extra time to do some Yeti mugs for them so they can put them in their shop and, you know, like, or make the sign thing or make the, cause there's definitely, I mean, for sure, you know, people are starting to look at life a little differently anyways, right now. Right. And it just, for instance, I just love this Turo renting my car, you know, I'm solving a need, a po- you know, uh, solving a problem, but I'm also like making money and I'm contributing to the local market, right? Why should I, why should I, or why should Maui or tourism or Hawaii uh, or the has- hospitality industry or tourists for that matter, why should they have to put up with some global ent- entity, <laughs> you know? When they could directly contribute to my back pocket, which turns, you know, then I'm turning around and, um, you know, going, you you know, spending that money already in that, you know, that area. So, yeah, exactly. Um, So, you know, it's kind of interesting how it the world is is actually changing right before our eyes. We just don't see it. Yeah. You know. Um, but it's the one thing I, you know, like it's, I say it right on the YouTube channel. It's a life hacker's guide to powder coating. And that could be, if you're a consumer or a powder coater, what's the, what is the life hack here, you know, to, to, to expanding your business or growing or doing whatever, you know, we were, we just started doing QuickBooks online. Right. Uh, I guess it was probably February or March. And I've been using PayPal business for years and years and years. I almost like three or four times just threw QuickBooks out and went back to PayPal. Yeah, I know. It has its, yeah. Yeah. Has I its. didn't, I don't understand some of the things that, why they do it, but I'm starting to get better at it. But. Yeah. Well, we use the desktop, not the online version. And anybody I've ever talked to um, that has the online say it's just like you can't undo something. That's the main thing. The and direct, it's the uh, the direct deposit. You can't turn that stuff off. Yeah, exactly. And it just, I don't want to go there. It's like, uh, so uh, like at PayPal, if somebody did a powder coating job for them, 
charge them a hundred bucks. Uh, they pay through a credit card or a, uh, an invoice digitally, you know, and they didn't pay mm-hmm. cash or whatever. Uh, they charge you that fee, right? Well, PayPal, they take the fee off the hundred dollars, right? When they pay. Oh, okay. QuickBooks don't. QuickBooks takes the money and then yeah. pulls the fee from your bank account. Yes. I was like, why is this doing this to me? Like, I haven't even deposited the money into my bank account. Why am I getting all these charges? I think that that's actually more of a traditional way of doing it because it's always been done that way. It messes with the books and this and that. There is a learning curve that we're going through QuickBooks and we're kind of slowly integrating. Hang in there. I've been doing a lot of under the table stuff. It's just the nature of our our industry, you know? I'm like, ah, because at first I was trying to, when I integrated to do disk and QuickBooks, I did them kind of right around the same time. So we'd have to go in and put all the information in to do this and then go back and do the same exact information in QuickBooks to create the invoice. Yeah. I was like, we got to get, no, this is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. This is wasting your time. We could be doing something else. Yeah. I think that, I mean, if you did do it like that, you know, like I know that because we had several businesses, obviously. Um, now the Turo, I was actually going to shut down my company, my LLC and just have Ross's LLC uh, going. And then this Turo thing happened. So now I'm like, okay, well now I'm not gonna do that. And, uh, but he, uh, our CPA, he created classes for us. So you can, you know, it's, it is it is a little bit more, maybe once you get that going, they can divide it up. I don't know, you might be able to do it, correct? In uh, the desktop version, I'll have to see it the online version because Mm-hmm. When I log in, it logs me yeah. into my coding's business. Right. So I don't know. That is interesting. If that, if I could do a different class for like mid ten, yeah. is they charge by the business? Yeah, I'm wondering if this is the guy that we started that rattled my cage driving yeah. up. I'm like, oh god, here we go. But yeah, I'll get into more of that. And hopefully by the time we talk next, I'll be more fluent on to do desk. And, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, it would be, um, it, it, I need to do another QuickBooks thing too. I think that that would be a really, um, I am going to interview um, someone pretty well versed, hopefully in the fall, I'll be uh, talking to her and good, good longtime friend of mine, but also has done work for powder coating companies. So she's a, you know, specific to uh, QuickBooks there. Cause I think that my, my thing is, is like the, in the services are not the services, but in the chart of accounts, um, I've really kind of added stuff over the years and it's just doesn't make sense. It's not orderly and it kind of bug, bugs me because I really didn't know what I was doing in QuickBooks when I first started it. So I was just like, no, plus, well, you know, when we first started too, like, you know, first of all, when they ask you for the category, like, what are you? Well, the closest thing is construction and it's not even close. Right. You know, so I've always failed at trying to find your industry under those tabs. (laughs) Yeah. They never, never, ever have our industry. (laughs) Um, at the time we were doing, um, you know, we were doing, you know, remodeling and stuff like that too. So when we first started it, so it, it did help, but now it doesn't. So I've created a bunch of stuff in there that just needs to either go away or get reordered. You know, the income is still the income. It's just, yeah. Clean that, up all that's what I want to find out is what is that formula and then share it with everybody, right? Like you, you want it like this, this, and this. So I want to maybe do a self-experiment to, to help help everybody get their QuickBooks set up r- properly. That'd be the ultimate goal. That would be good. And then if yeah. it would be a downloadable template. Oh, you mean like the vault? <laughs> Well, no, what I'm saying is the QuickBooks, like you could download the, like it. Oh, the, right. Or QuickBooks setup would be on there and they can take that template, put it on their oh, right. online or their oh. desktop version and it'll all be there. Oh, wouldn't that just. I'm trying to. Uh, Wait a minute. I have something for that. I, I got to figure out where I put it. It's a special tool that I use. Oh, shucks. Where's that tool? I can't find it. Darn it. It's my magic wand. 
Oh, oh here it is. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> it all goes away. No, oh, there you go. It's better yeah. upload. <laughs> there like you the, go. I the, busted it out. The CF or C, CBS file, CSV file, whatever. I keep CBS, it. yeah. Uh, I'm going to, as I put more and more and more and more of those colors in, I'm going to try to put that file up on the page. Yeah. You can download it to your like color choices for products or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. But that's going to take a while. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's there are so many. There are thousands of colors out there. How could you, yeah, do it? That would be. It. That's why I'm almost. It's almost easier just to ask these people. Yeah. Which I'm sure they could give. It's not like it's hidden information. It's just, it would be nice if it was in an Excel spreadsheet or something. But we've certainly talked about a lot. Yeah. Cover some good stuff today. Yeah. I have to figure out what the title of this podcast is going to be. Okay, I don't know. We want website, pigments, forms. Yeah. Like, business. how do you throw it all? Productivity. Maybe we'll pigments to from pigments to productivity or something like that. Anyways, always good to talk to you, Reno. You got Constantly. it going on. We're no, about to right. close up and go to the house. We're waiting on what? Oh. They're waiting on you. Oh no, uh, actually, the, I guess you said we got a customer for some box. So we're waiting on that. Everybody else is going home. But you know. Yeah, I'm going to show that customer of mine. Go away. <laughs> Here's my go away wand. Go away. <laughs> but all right, we'll have a good one. All right, thank you very much. And uh, uh, keep me posted on that video you make. Oh, yes, definitely. I'll, uh, I'll have it. I'll be telling everybody about it. So awesome. I just gotta get all the uh okays from Brian once I get yeah. that. I'd love to have him on the show. See what you can do. He's kind of shy. He is no, I think he's just about ready to retire. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah. He's trying to pass the torch his name out of the limelight. But he has been posting more often, though. He he never was before, and now he's posting in the groups all the time. So at least your yeah, group. Yeah, he's posting your group all the time. He's getting a lot more downtime. His sons are picking up. They're doing awesome. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, well, before he leaves, I'd like to, yeah, before he gets that retirement bug, I'd love to have him on the show. He's certainly responsible for how we got into business. Definitely. You know? And he needs. Now to I got into it. For that. Into it. He's helped me out a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, have a great evening. Yep. Y'all too. All have right. Take care. Bye.